Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the Slow Crafting Podcast. My name is Nadine and I live in the northwest of the UK and uh, this is a podcast or vlog about trying to incorporate a slow living approach into my crafting endeavours, be that um, making clothes for myself or my children um, and knitting, sewing, spinning, the whole shebang. Um, I'm coming to you today from a new location. It's, uh, yes, we're finally into our new home after three weeks of being in a temporary accommodation. Um, yes, I'm not sure about setup here. Um, it, it, the lighting might be a bit off and, and everything else, but uh, this was the easiest location for me to just set up and get on and record quickly today. Um, right, okay, straight in with it. Uh, today I'm wearing some handmade items. This is um, the ooh, <coughs> Jolly D Crescent Shawl. But, um, there we go. It's huge. Uh, I, I actually de designed this. It's um, you can find it on Ravelry, as I said, the the Jolly D Crescent Shawl. Um, oh, I'm not very good at wearing shawls, <laughs> so I can't set it up properly looking at a reversed image in the in the camera. So we'll just have it like that for now. I do actually need it in here because it's probably at most about uh, 14 degrees sat in the conservatory. Yeah, there's no heating in here, so we, we're usually dressed up in our woolies and <laughs> hats and gloves for when we sit in the conservatory at the moment. Um, yes, it's I made it with some vintage wool. It's oh, it's some vintage Scottish wool. It'll be uh, so wool and spun two ply, but it was one of the ladies at a knitting group I used I used to go to before I had the. The children. She um, sadly passed away and a lot of her stash came to the knitting group to be redistributed amongst people that would appreciate it. So yes, this is uh, crocheted using some, some very lovely uh, rustic, quite rustic yarn from, from Joyce. So thank you. Thank you for passing it on Joyce. Um, and the dress that I'm wearing today uh, has been uh, <laughs> has been um, in my wardrobe for the last ooh, more than 10 years. Um, uh, I made it myself. It's using the new look pattern 6457 and it's view... where is it? A, which is... Oh, crikey, reverse image. This one here. There we go. Got there eventually. Um, again, this is a, a vintage theme today. It's using some uh, vintage curtain fabric. That, uh, I know it's not going to be to everybody's tastes, but I don't care. I like it. It's big and bold and brushy and everything else. Um, yes, some vintage curtain fabric that my sister had moved into a house. It must have been about probably. 17 years ago and the, these were up, these curtains were up in one of the bedrooms and she saw them and thought they were hideous but thought I know who'll think they're delightful and uh, gave them to me to do something with and I think probably about five or six years later I turned them into into this dress um, now I'm a bit sad to be wearing it because uh, I did make it at a time when I was considerably bigger than I have been recently um, and it fits me again which is a bit worrying but um, yes I have put on about a stone since um, all the house debacle, moving house debacle began which uh, isn't good so uh, but at least I have handmade clothes that will fit me at this size which is nice I'm not having to resort to wearing uh, joggy bottoms and jumpers every day um, so yes the, it was this the pattern again this new look pattern 6457 was really easy to make um, I've made it several times in uh, with them without the straps I think with a bust my size I do possibly need the straps to get it to stay up um, 
that they're my only issue with it uh, being the size that that I am I'm not a huge brain stretch of imagination but I'm not skinny either is that the um, the gathering around the waist doesn't particularly do my um, my figure any favours I could probably have done with uh, taking out some of the fullness in the skirt and have it be you know, a bit of a smoother silhouette um, I know certainly in some of the other fabrics I've made this in um, which have been sort of more taffeta type uh, fabrics that uh, the gathering at the waist has been made a very pronounced puffiness uh, around my middle which it is, is, is not kind on uh, was with a mummy tummy um, so yes that's what I'm wearing oh and I'm wearing handmade socks <laughs> and knitted socks these are the, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it uh, some they are the pattern is spring forward for it's a free pattern from Knitty magazine um, and the yarn is Opal um, it's from the 100, 100 Vasa series and it's the custom Regen uh, colorway uh, and it's got sparkle in it <laughs> so I love it um, I actually bought it a couple of years ago from Outback Yarns up in Castle Douglas in Dumfries um, when we go we go on holiday up into Dumfriesshire quite often Dumfries and Galloway and um, when whenever we're there I always sneak into to Castle Douglas to, to buy some holiday holiday wool holiday yarn um, so that got knitted up but I, I knitted them up as part of a, uh, a knit along for a podcast um, sadly the the lady that did does that did the podcast is no longer podcasting which is a real shame because she was she was quite she was quite funny and then well in a sort of reserved kind of way um yes it was the the wee bit nitty podcast and uh elena oh she was lovely but um you know she chose not to podcast anymore so that's that's a shame but each to their own um right okay cracking on with what i've been doing since i last spoke to you fortunately <laughs> The last few weeks have been the antithesis of slow crafting and I'm entirely blaming my daughter's nursery on this. Now, for people who have children, particularly uh, parents in the UK, you might be familiar with um, World Book Day and the chaos that this creates at schools and nurseries around, certainly around the UK, with uh, children having to dress up uh, as characters from books. Now, our our nursery chose to uh, have a, a well. It was the whole. It's a school nursery, so the whole school had the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory theme. I think to stop uh, children just going in like superhero outfits and you know things. So to try and tie it into an actual book rather than TV characters or, or things like that. Um, but. I didn't actually have access to my fabric stash until four days before she needed to be wearing the outfit. And my other half did keep pointing out to me that he could have just gone to the supermarket and bought a Willy Wonka costume for £15. But I didn't want that because obviously you, you don't know the process behind how that garment was made, the fabrics that it was made with, yada yada yada. But uh, also, because it feels like cheating, I'm a stay-at-home mum and I can sew, so buying a fancy dress outfit just goes against the grain. Um, I wouldn't like to wear a shop-bought fancy dress outfit for myself, so I want my children to wear to wear handmade and sort of see the amount of effort that goes into making garments like this. Um, the girls had seemed to have quite a fabulous time helping me uh, one Sunday morning laying on the floor so I could draw around them and, and draft the patterns and and everything else so it, it was fun to, to make it but it was very rush 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 don't speak to me while mummy's working and uh, yes it, it wasn't the nice relaxed calm and mindful process that I want my crafting to be but uh, no so uh, anyway without whittering on it much longer about that um yeah so i made uh some trousers 
a jacket, a waistcoat, a bow tie. I made a hat out of cardboard as well and, and her dad made uh, a gold topped walking cane. But uh, now <laughs> she has spilt milk all down this so it, need, it does need to go in the wash but I didn't think I'd have time to get it in the wash and out again before before needing to show you today so as soon as I've shown you this it's going in, in the wash. Um, I don't think you can necessarily see the big stain down the front of it on the camera but I know it's there. <laughs> Um, right, actually I'll show you the, the trousers first. These were, like, all these were self-drafted patterns and it's basically because I could make them and, and get them to still fit the fitter. So we've got some bottle green, just elasticated straight leg trousers. Um, this is all using fabric that was in my stash. So I think this green fabric was um, I'm feeling it. it's, it's very much all made man-made man fabric so it's it's not ideal but it was in my stash and needed using up rather than going to landfill. So yes the green fabric for the trousers was actually given to me by my friend's mum when she had a massive fabric declutter a few years ago. Um, oh this isn't, this this is, um, I think it was some lining in some curtains, it's a, a, a cotton and we did some potato printing on it to, to make it um, polka dot uh, and spotty uh, so yeah that was the bow tie and it just pinned on because I didn't think she'd like having it actually fastened around her neck um, now this one was a bit of a disaster because it wouldn't fit this is the so I had to let it out and put a panel down the back just to get it rounder um, let me fasten this button that none of the finishing on this is, is very good at all so this was a little waistcoat um, it's I think it was all curtain fabrics. This is a theme for today. Nadine loves making things from curtains. <laughs> um, but yes, there's the there's the panel down the back. This is all very crinkled because it's been in the, in the washing pile. Um, but uh, yes, it got. I don't know. You aren't going to be able to see. I'll show you on the jacket because that one's better actually. Um, so yes, that was that was the little waistcoat. And then this is my favourite bit. A self-drafted tailcoat pattern jacket complete with buttons with ooh, ooh, wrong way. Uh, Willy Wonka and then one that looks a bit like a sweet there we go ooh. I'm not getting used to this going the wrong way there we go so um, I'll show you the buttonhole for this one actually these were my first attempts at doing hands-on buttonholes. I was quite impressed with that. Ideally I would have liked it to have been on <laughs> something more important and and uh, something that was going to last a bit longer but um, yes, hand stitch buttonholes on a fancy dress outfit. So yes, that was, uh, that was my oldest um, Willy Wonka costume. She loved it, she looked fantastic. There were hundreds of other uh, Willy Wonkers, because uh, that was one of the popular costumes in the, um, in, that was in the supermarkets, but uh, she was the only one in a, in a handmade costume. Um, and she was very proud of that fact, so that made me very happy. Um, I'm sure in a few years time, when I'm trying to still shoehorn her into handmade things, she'll, she'll be dreadfully embarrassed and wanting shop-bought nonsense, but... Uh, <laughs> for the for the moment she's very happy with handmade stuff so that makes me happy too um so you just have to excuse me while i have a drink today i'm out of the habit um uh, probably youtube will choose me uh, at the moment where i've got a mouthful of coffee to be the still for the thumbnail um right yes all the bits that were the antithesis of slow crafting um a friend invited uh, myself and, and the rest of my family to her baby's naming ceremony, um, which is this coming Saturday, and um, I've got to find a present for it. So, being the sort of practical, thrifty person I am, went, oh, I'll make something. Yes, 
not really slow crafting when I'm thinking, yes, I've got to get this finished by Saturday. <laughs> but never mind. Um, next week we'll try harder. It's all about the process of trying to incorporate it. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan. Other times we can be more mindful and take longer and enjoy the process of it rather than just speeding through to the finished object. Right, so for my friend's uh, little girl, I decided to make uh, the, oh, it's from the book What to Knit the Toddler Years by Nikki van der Kaer, and it is the, oh, I'm trying to show you without showing you the instructions, the Joseph cardigan. Now, I love this cardigan, but more importantly, I love this small child. <laughs> I want a ginger baby. I, she is stunningly beautiful and I wish my, my children looked this neat and presentable and and ginger. Uh, sadly they don't. They would have crazy wild hair and at least be covered in mud, if not biscuit as well. Um, so yes, Joseph Cardigan. I have made uh, before. Uh, I made it for my oldest little girl last year for her birthday. Um, it's, it does work up quite, quite small, the size is small. I know my daughter's uh, quite tall for her age but still it, it's very sort of form fitting. Um, but it's, it's a lovely easy knit. There are, I think there is a, a mistake in the pattern um, to do with some of the decreases but uh, I'm sure I'll remember where that is when I get up to it. Um, and so far I've got two sleeves and uh, oh it's on the floor the start of the body um, it's knitted bottom up um, and you join it onto the arms and then work the yoke um, I'm using vintage stash here this has been in my stash for at least 17 years um, I think it's it's acrylic it's an acrylic lamb's wool blend because the woman that's going to it is she's not a knitter and she has small children so it needs to be machine washable and i don't want her to be frightened of putting a, a daughter in it because she doesn't want to ruin it um it's style craft renaissance double it's a double knitting yarn now i'm assuming this has been long discontinued um <laughs> you see from the price ticket where well, you might not be able to 69 pence this is how old this yarn is but I have quite a, quite a stockpile of it in my, my stash I think I was going to I bought it to knit my mum a jump up and then didn't get around to doing it um, so yeah but it, it, it's lovely and soft and doesn't feel like it, it feels nicer than a 100% than acrylic yarn would do but it still isn't real wool and it it, it doesn't smell the same as real wool does so but but not everybody wants that from the <laughs> from the knitting just smell like a soggy sheep yes uh, i'd be happy with that but uh, not everybody is but uh, yes anyway it's um i don't, I don't know if that's quite true to, uh, and that it looks a bit bluer on the screen i think everything looks a bit bluer on the screen in here today um it, it's got a slightly more sort of heathered purple look about it in real life um but yes it, it's it's an easy knit apart from the one mistake in the pattern and it's soft and I'm going I think I'm going to use some jazzy buttons to um, liven it up a bit I probably won't get to uh, show you the finished thing um, because of, like I say I'm giving it away on Saturday uh, but um, if you follow me on Instagram I'll probably be posting a picture of it on there um, I'm Nady Bob's on Instagram now my account set to private because I do quite often post pictures of my children on there as well as, as my crafting and makes but um, if you want to send me a, a, an ad request and you look obviously like you're into your sewing or knitting or spinning then then I will I will accept you um, okay so yes yeah, so like I say I'll probably post a finished picture on uh, on Instagram of that because I haven't worked out how to insert still images into this video footage yet. I might do one day. And it's a bit technical, technologically advanced for me. Um, okay, what else have I completed recently? Let 
There you go. Oh, sorry for the rustling. That made me feel like a real podcaster then. <laughs> Apologising for rustling. Um, this is some ooh, black Welsh mountain that I spun um, in the last couple of weeks. It's, I don't know if you can get a proper look at it. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of white fibres and heathering and kemp in there and it looks quite, um, quite brown. Black Welsh Mountain is meant to be the only true black fleece that there is. This is not black, this is brown. It smells sheepy though. Um, I'm not sure why, um, but I, one of the other podcasts I watch, um, Emily from Fibre Town, she was commenting about the very same thing, uh, about some, some Black Welsh Mountain she'd, she'd spun uh, recently, about the fact that it was uh, brown and, and heathered with kemp in it and... Uh, that's not what she expected from reading the Fleece and Fibre Source book by Deb Robson. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's uh, just variation in uh, fleeces or, or quite quite what the, the deal is with that. But um, yeah, hers was from a, a farm in the US and mine was from um, uh, Wing and Wool Works in the UK. So it's not going. It's not likely to have just been one bad batch that had uh, gone round it so uh, might, might just be natural variation in fibre because it is after all open to elements and all various different things but yes it, the, it, this two ply is a fingering weight um, it, I've got 260 uh, 260 meters from uh, 100 grams it's a uh, woolen spun um, and with a quite a tight twist and a tight ply on it because that's how I like my yarn. It's it was a really nice spin. I enjoyed it. I'd be happy to spin it again, um, but I don't know yet what, what I'm going to make with it. But yes, I'm happy with that spin. Um, right, okay. Um, I spoke to you in the last episode about uh, this book, *In Praise of Slow* by Carl Honoré, uh, and about finding out more about slow living and slow living movement in general. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I finished this book so I can't actually remember quite a bit of it. A lot's happened since then and I'm dreadful at retaining information at the moment. But um, it, it did, uh, there is a section in here on leisure and uh, slow living in relation to, to leisure pursuits and it does make reference to crafts in general and to knitting specifically. Um, uh, here we go, I'll, I'll just read you a quick extract. Um, Crafts are a perfect ex perfect expression of the slow philosophy. As the pace of life accelerated in the 19th century, many people fell out of love with the mass-produced goods pouring in from the new factories. William Morris and other proponents of the arts and crafts movement which started in Britain blamed industrialisation for giving machines the upper hand and stifling the creative spirit. Their solution was to return to making things slowly and carefully by hand. Uh, crafts were hailed as a link to a kinder, gentler era. Uh, and then it goes on to say that more than a century later we're returning back to, to, to that philosophy and approach. Um, and then uh, it, it speaks specifically about knitting. Um, yeah, Knitting is by nature slow. You cannot push a button, turn a dial or flick a switch to knit more quickly. The real joy of knitting lies in the doing, rather than in reaching the finish line. Studies show that the rhythmic, repetitive dance of the needles can lower heart rate and blood pressure, lulling the knitter into a peaceful, almost meditative state. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how it fits with copyright, but that's from pages 189 and 191, respectively, of In Praise of Slow by Carl Honoré. Um, this is published... Uh, yeah. oh, that's not helping me. Orion non-fiction and it's the 2004, uh, it was published in 2004. There we go, I think that should cover me for having quoted from it. Um, yes, so it, it does say uh, quite a bit more about, about knitting and uh, annoyingly it does talk about it being trendy um, but as I've said there's various different points in this book that, that have irritated me but if I just 
step back and think about the um, the good bits uh, in this book. It is, it's still quite an interesting read. Um, and the section on uh, slow slow children, <laughs> or slow parenthood, wasn't as bad as I expected. It was basically just about not overscheduling the timetables and having them rush, rush, rush from one after school club to another. But um, that, that was fine with us. We're very much get outside and play. Uh, entertain yourselves make up your own schedule we don't book children in we don't book the girls into after school clubs and before school clubs and ballet lessons and swimming lessons and everything else they, they just play so um yes that, that that was quite good I, I might at some point um go into a bit more detail um on this in in the blog um given that I, I didn't go into as much of a review as I wanted to on here because it, it, I just haven't had time with the house move. Um, okay, so coming plans for the for the next couple of weeks um, is to read this book, uh, Slow Fashion by um, Safia Mini. Um, this is essentially about um, the ethics of uh, garment production and how we can achieve a sustainable and ethically sound uh, process in the garment, garment supply chain. Um, so I haven't started it yet but I'm looking forward to reading it. It was published in 2016 so it, it's a lot more current than um, the, the Carl Honoré book so uh, I shall probably tell you a bit more about it uh, next time, next time I speak to you. Ooh. Oh, the colours have changed. Mm -hmm. No, it's still very blue in here. Um, yes, I, I plan to do some sewing um, at some point. This probably comes under acquisitions rather than current plans because I'm not sure when I'll get around to doing it. But uh, Simplicity had a 50% off sale uh, recently and I think it was just before we moved into the new house and I was feeling sorry for myself. So I uh, treated myself and, and my daughter to some uh, sewing patterns. Um, <laughs> there's very much a dotty angel theme to uh, this next section because I think I now own almost all of her patterns. Um, so right, for my daughter, oh, for both of them actually, I got the Simplicity 1018 uh, and this is a dress or a, a tunic top for a little girl. I think it goes from ages, uh, oh, it doesn't do it in ages, but I think it's something, uh, I think the smallest chest, me chest measurement is 22 going up to a 27. Um, so that could relate, to, it says pattern size 3 to 8. So it might be in years or it might just be in uh, some random non-transferable reference number. Um, but yes, I love the Dotty Angel aesthetic. And uh, again, Ginger Child, I was sold, I was sold on the Ginger Child. Um, yes, uh, and I actually gave my daughter this pattern for her birthday, which was last week, and she was so excited. My plan had been to make the, the, the tunics up in advance and give her the tunics but from one thing or another we didn't get uh, didn't get time to that so I just gave her the pattern and the fabrics and she got really excited because she watches uh, some of the sewing podcasts with me and she's forever doing her own little sewing vlog so she'll she'll put some clothes on and go, yeah, so, hello, this is the molly top and I made it from such and such fabric. <laughs> Probably makes me a bad parent that she's doing this but uh, it's very 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 cute um, yes so she was over the moon with that pattern and I'm planning on making the tunic top which is uh, view B um, and using this dinosaur fabric now it's awesome uh, unfortunately I don't know where it's from um, the selvage refers to it as Hilberg fabrics but I, I, it was um, it was in my stash because uh, 
my little girl's grandma, my mother-in-law, had bought it for my little girl uh, a while ago. But yeah, so that for the main, main body of the tunic, and then the pockets in some contrasting dinosaur fabric. And that hasn't got anything on the selvages, so I can't tell you where that one's from. Um, but as well as a dinosaur one, I also this is my favourite fabric ever. Uh, plan on making a one from this doctor's use fabric. <gasps> no, we've got the entire set of doctor's use books, and she absolutely loves them. So, and there should be enough of this fabric for me to make one for both the girls actually um this is a robert kaufman uh fabric called celebrate zeus and i got this from abacam uh, in manchester so yes just oh, so beautiful now this looks quite orange it's it's actually a very sort of scarlet red colouring in real life but yes so that are my plans. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use for the pocket and the contrasting binding on, on this one, but uh, I'll probably have got something in stash that's just red or uh, we'll go with it, but we, we shall see. Um, right, the other two patterns I got. I don't know, I see, I said this was 10818. It's not. <laughs> I'm reading backwards in the screen. It's 8101. <sighs> not going well Nadine uh, and the next pattern I got is 8153 there we go <laughs> uh, and this is uh, uh, it's a dress a skirt and a vest top now I quite like the idea of the vest top for summer um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how flattering it will be but I suppose it should be because it's uh, I think it's el elasticated under the well certainly this one is um, under the bust so that would probably be more flattering figure shape um, but yes I, I just do like this styling look it's so pretty and then the final piece which is probably actually going to be the one that I attempt to make first is um, 8230 now it's uh, an apron well it's a couple of aprons actually um, there's this top one which is a, a Japanese Japanese style one that uh, basically you end up with a big piece of fabric that you can either tie at the front or, or tie at the back and have it cinched in a bit um, but yes that's going to be more flattering and, and more forgiving of the fact that my weight's yo-yoing a bit at the moment um, so yes I think I've probably got some brown brown cotton in, uh, in in my stash somewhere that um, uh, I think I'm going to attempt to make this with and I might even uh, do some surface uh, manipulation on, on, on the sort of off cuts of the fabric to make uh, contrasting fabric for the pockets um, on this rather than have to try and find uh, uh, an equivalent weight uh, contrasting fabric in my stash um so yes those are things i've got planned and coming up for me um i have been doing some knitting as well other than than on the on the joseph cardigan for, for my friend's baby but i've not brought that with me <laughs> i'm not organized enough this morning um yes i i've knitted a, a jumper for my daughter for her birthday it's a, a yoked sweater um it's very colourful and jazzy uh, but I'll, I'll show you that next time and I have done some more knitting on my uh, hand spun sweater but uh, that's that's upstairs at the moment so I'll, I'll have to show you that next time as well but uh, as I need a wee now <laughs> uh, I best uh, call it a day and uh, get all this tidied up before my other half gets up and find out, finds out about my secret podcasting double life um, okay if you made it to the end thank you for listening uh, if this is your first time I hope you've enjoyed it and, and stuck through to the end um, hopefully I'll speak to you again in two weeks time uh, and I'll let you know what I've been, been doing then 
Uh, I should be posting uh, on the blog in the meantime, uh, maintenance of nadine.wordpress.com and if you want to go find me on Ravelry and say hello, you're more than welcome. I'm on there as Crafty Nadine. Okay, speak to you next time. Bye-bye.